Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here today. I want to look at something called supernodes. And what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the circuit I have in front of you. We've got a whole series of resistors. They're all two kilo ohm resistors. I've also got two sources. I've got a constant current source that puts out three milliamps and I've got a constant voltage uh, supply that's five volts. Um, so about this video here, we previously looked at circuits using nodal analysis. Now I also showed you how to use superposition to analyze circuits. Now nodal analysis really comes from Kirchhoff's current law. And then there's this simplification, right? Engineers have managed to optimize every single step of the solutions. Now what supernodes does is it also leads to simplifying the nodal analysis. Man, it's like a simplification for the simplification. They really optimize every step. So in this case, I'm going to show you what a supernode is and why you would use it for this particular circuit and how to solve for the voltage nodes. And then once you know the voltage at all the nodes in this uh, circuit, you can easily solve for the currents. All right, so let's go set it up set up the equations and highlight the difference between just regular nodal analysis and how to use the supernode concept. All right, so we're gonna start just like we would for the nodal analysis. So we're gonna define the potential at some of these nodes. So we'll call this V1, V2, and V3. This is a standard textbook example here found in most books in electrical engineering. Uh, we're gonna call this down here zero volts. So that means all of these points down here are at the same potential. They're all connected by ideal wires, so there's no potential drop across those wires. Uh, the next thing you wanna do if you were evaluating this using the nodal analysis, what I like to do is I like to pick a direction for the current. And even if I don't know, I just guess. I'm gonna guess that there's gonna be a current flowing in this direction. I'll probably guess that there's a current flowing down. Now I didn't define the polarity here of this potential difference, so let's put positive voltage on that side and negative voltage on this side. So the potential difference here has to be five volts. Now what you could do is also define a direction of the current over here, right? Something like this. Okay, and in the final branch again, just assume that the current's flowing in this direction. Now what we're really doing here is we're looking at all of these nodes and we're basically applying Kirchhoff's current law, which basically says that whatever current flows into these nodes has to be the same current flowing out of the node. So let's start with node number one here, which is at potential one. The current flowing in is the current I from this current source. So we have to have I like this. Now it's the same current flowing through this branch and that's flowing out of the node. Now the current flowing out of the node here, we're gonna put a negative sign just to remind us that it's flowing out. And if I have the current defined from going from the left-hand side toward the point V2, then the amount of current that you get is V1 minus V2. That's the potential difference between those two points and divided by the resistance. In this case, it's a resistance R1. So that's really our first equation and that equals to zero. All right, now we're gonna move on to node number two. Uh, node number two says, well, whatever current flows in has to be the current flowing out. In this case, I've got current, um, this current flowing in, which we've defined like this. All right, again, over R1. That term's pretty straightforward. Now, what else do we have? We have a current flowing out. It's going down here in this first branch, and that is going to be flowing out, so I'll put a negative sign, and it's V2 divided by the resistance R2. All right, now we come up to a little problem over here, right? How are we going to define the voltage over here, or not the voltage, rather, but the current flowing into node number two? Right, this case is a little bit different than the previous cases we saw. But one thing I could do is I could just call this current, let's just call it I star. Just give it a special name here. So the way I've defined the direction, we still have I star flowing into that junction. So what I would do over here is I would add I star if I was applying just the standard nodal analysis. So it would look something like this. And then that's it, that has to be equal to zero. All right, number three. Number three says, well, again, you look at what's flowing out, what's flowing in. Uh, again, you have everything flowing out here. That's a little bit strange, right? But nonetheless, we just apply our equations. So whenever a current is flowing out, I basically just put a negative sign in front of that. So look, the first one, I have I star flowing out through that power supply over here. I have also got now current flowing down in this branch flowing through the resistance R3. And the amount of current you get is the potential difference. 
divided by the resistance. Again, all of these points down here are at zero volts. So that's why these terms look a little bit simpler, right? You're taking the difference between voltage V3 and zero volts. So that's why that term is the way it is. And now the next term here, again, you have V3 and zero volts is the difference here. So we have a certain amount of current flowing out. This is V3 divided by R4. All right, and all that has to be equal to zero. All right, next thing. Well, I think that's about it, right? If you have a look at all of our equations, um, if we have a look at all the unknowns right now, we have V1 is an unknown, V2 is an unknown, uh, V3 is an unknown, and we also have this new variable, the, which is the current flowing through this middle branch. I couldn't really write this one as a potential difference divided by I star, but if you look at it, we have four unknowns, but how many equations do we have? We only have three equations. We don't have a linear system yet. So the fourth equation, which is really important, actually comes from uh, this particular point here between voltage node two and voltage node three. We know there's a power supply here, and I've got the positive end on the left side and the negative end on the right side, which means that I can easily write down an equation for this. I know that the voltage difference between V2 and V3 has to be equal to the voltage of this power supply. And in this case, it's gonna be positive V, in this case, five volts. So this is really the fourth equation here, which is really important. And now you have a linear system. So I didn't apply anything with super nodes yet. And what I wanna do first, I just wanna illustrate how you would do this just using standard nodal analysis. You have four equations and four unknowns. Uh, all of this can easily be solved for that. What we're going to do now is we're gonna use super nodes in order to simplify this a little bit. Okay, and what super nodes is, what they're going to do is they're gonna allow us to skip this step and basically to combine both of these equations into one simple equation. So let's go on the next page and I'll show you what a super node is and how you write down Kirchhoff's current law for this super node. All right, so what we've done here is I've kept all the equations the way they are because I, wanna, I want you to see how they get manipulated and how you can simplify uh, all of these four equations. At least you can combine equations two and three into one simple equation, and you can write that equation right away. So what I've defined here in this orange box is what I'm gonna call the super node. Let's go ahead and just make an arrow here just to remind you this is what a super node is. And what it does is it combines nodes V2 and V3 into one super node. Instead of having two independent nodes, they're going to be one bigger node, equivalent node. And what you do now is you simply apply the Kirchhoff's current law to the super node, right? Let's forget about the current flowing through it. What we're simply going to worry about is how much current flows into the super node and how much flows out of the super node. So if you were gonna write a super node equation, which I'll call two and three kind of combine, what you would do well here, I still have a current flowing in over here to that super node. And in this case, it would still be the same term, V1 minus V2 divided by R1. I have current flowing out through R2. That current leaves the super node. So you would have V2 divided by R2. Now, instead of combining this with the current I star, which I previously had to give me equation two, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna skip this whole thing and let's go all the way on the other side. Now I have some current leaving the super node and it goes down at the bottom. So that is V3 divided by R3. And I also have current flowing in this outer branch and it's leaving the node V3 and moving down. So if it's leaving the node, it should be V3 divided by R3. All right, this here equals to zero. So this here is the super node equation. You see that this super node equation, actually, if you have a close look at it, it doesn't include I star because I star gets kind of combined over here. But if I look at these equations two and three, if I was simply going to add up both of these equations, right? Imagine you were told just add up equations two and three. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, if you add up both of those equations, you get this first term, you get the second term. They're right here. I star is positive in one of these equations, equation two. However, it ends up being negative in the other equation. So when you add up equations two and three, the I star just leaves 
And then you're left with both of those terms here. They're still on the left-hand side. Oh, and I made a mistake over here. This here should be R4. In this case, it doesn't matter because they're all 2 kilo ohm resistors. But you see that at the end, by using a super node, which is just a linear combination of nodes 2 and 3, you're able to just simplify the system a little bit. So we no longer have the variable I star. If I consider the equations 1, the equation for the super node as another equation, and the last equation, equation 4, you now have a system of three equations and three unknowns, and that simplifies the algebra considerably, right? It's much easier to write that down. So let's go ahead and do that now on the next page and solve for the nodal voltages. All right, so what I'm first going to do now, I've rewritten the three equations. There's three unknowns here, which are the nodal voltages, which I had before. Again, V1, V2, and V3. And this is a linear system. And just to prove it to you, what we're going to do here is we're going to rearrange everything and simplify it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep all the nodal voltage terms on the left-hand side. So if I do that, it should look something like this. So equation one, I could show that is V1 minus V2. And if I multiply through by R1 and bring the current term on the other side, what you end up getting here is R1 multiplied by the current. All right, that's equation one. Equation two, again, all of these uh, resistors are the same value. They're all two kilo ohms. So actually there is a simplification here that happens. And I can also combine these two terms. They both only include the nodal voltage R3. So if you do that now, let's multiply through by resistance R1, and they're all the same resistance. So at the end, this simplifies quite a bit. So you get V1 minus uh, 2V2 uh, minus 2V3. And again, that equals to zero. And that's only because these resistors are always the same. All right, number three. Uh, number three is already, I have zero V1. I have minus V2 and minus V3. This here equals to this uh, voltage source, which is five volts in this particular case. All right, this is a linear system of equations. Actually, if you go back to linear algebra, you can actually write this nicely in matrix form, and that's what I'm gonna do here. And my column vector in this case is V1, V2, and V3. And what I'm left with here on the right-hand side is another column vector, which is R1. If you remember linear algebra, you're wondering, why do you always have to do this stuff? When do I have to really use this in real life? Well, here's the case where you have to use it in real life. We have minus one, we have zero V3 in the first equation. Uh, the second one has coefficients one, minus two, and minus two. And the third one is zero, minus one, and minus one. All right, here's our linear system. All we have to do now is simply solve this, and that'll give you the nodal voltages uh, for this particular problem. All right, so let's go on the next page and solve for this. All right, in order to evaluate this, what I'm gonna do now is we're going to actually substitute the numbers in here. Um, what we have to do, if I define this whole matrix here as the matrix A, what you wanna do here is simply evaluate the inverse of that matrix. You can either use your calculator or you can do it by hand. Um, I evaluated that inverse and it gave me something like this. This is one third. And all the coefficients here were four minus one and two, uh, one minus one and two, and one minus one and minus one. And now to get the solution, you still need to multiply by this column vector here, which was this resistance, two kilo ohms. And the voltage source here was five volts. All right, so what you have to do now is just do a little bit of algebra in order to get that. So you carry out this matrix vector multiplication I have the one third in the front. And now the terms are, well, you get the four, the value of the resistance, R1 multiplied by I, and plus two times that voltage. You can see this is a linear combination of the two sources, right? You get a term that includes the current source and another term that includes uh, the voltage. There's different coefficients in the front, but you can see that this is really is a linear solution. Uh, this is one third. Again, you get a similar term. You get R1 multiplied by the current plus two times V. And for V3, it looks like one third. Again, first term is the same, R1 multiplied by the current. Um, in this case, it's minus V. Be a little bit careful with that term. Now we can substitute all the values. Let's evaluate this term. 
R1 multiplied by the current, that current that shows up quite a bit. R1 is 2,000, 2 kilo ohms, and also the current is 3 milliamps. 3 milliamps is 3 divided by 1,000. So you see that R1 multiplied by I everywhere is going to give me 6 volts. So that simplifies our math quite a bit. So you get one third, you get four times six, and plus two times five. Okay, so that's 24 plus 10 is 34 over three, gives me 11.33 volts. What else, the voltage V2 now is one third. This becomes six plus two times five. Uh, 16 is the term in the bracket divided by three. Well, that gives me 5.33 volts. And the last one, uh, voltage at node three was one third. Again, you could just get six minus five here. So this one's small. That's one divided by three, which is 0 0.33 volts. Okay, so there you have it, folks. That's how you find the voltages at those three nodes. Okay, you can also see that the difference now between V2 and V3, right? V2 minus V3 is indeed five volts, which was required here from um, this power supply. And that's exactly what you get if you take the difference between both of those. All right, so the super node allows you to simplify the equation sets a little bit faster than using standard nodal analysis. Simply look for branches where there is simply one constant voltage supply, and you can apply a super node to that and just look at all the currents flowing in versus flowing out of that super node. Hope you liked the video. Thanks.